Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Maker Faire. Uh, this is getting started with Raspberry Pi, which is a bit of a whirlwind tour of the Raspberry Pi in about 15 minutes. There's a lot of information to talk about, so I'm going to go as fast as I can. Um, the Raspberry Pi, uh, we'll be talking about, um, and we'll be talking about what you know, what it is, what you can do with it, what you need to get started, that sort of thing. Uh, my name is Matt Richardson. I'm a contributing editor for Make Magazine, and um, I'm also the co-author of Getting Started with Raspberry Pi. Uh, which I co-authored with a good friend of mine, Sean Wallace, um, and we put everything we could, we knew about Raspberry Pi into this book about how to get started with it. And uh, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is in this book. But then we kind of take it a little bit further to talk about projects and stuff that you can do with Raspberry Pi. So I guess I think the first question to answer right now is, what is a Raspberry Pi? Basically, the Raspberry Pi is a computer. You plug in a keyboard, monitor, mouse, and you can use it like a keyboard just like you know, uh, you know, your laptop or whatever. You can even get it online like your computer and, and surf the web if you wanted to. But it was meant for education. It was built to help students uh, get into hacking computers and playing around with them. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about specs and the parts of the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to point out a few highlights of the board. First of all, the processor on the board, the main part that does all the hard work, is the same kind of processor you'll find in a cell phone, and kind of an older generation cell phone, maybe around like a first iPhone. If you like the technical specs, it's a 700 megahertz ARM 11 processor. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM. It has a video output, so you can connect it to a monitor or TV. Uh, on the bottom, you see a uh, HDMI cable uh, input there to, uh, to output to an HDMI monitor. You also have a composite output for older analog television. So if you have an old TV, you can hook a Raspberry Pi up to it and maybe repurpose it. There's a USB port, and that's how you'll hook up a keyboard or uh, a mon uh, I'm sorry, a keyboard or a mouse. You can also hook up any other kind of USB device: webcam, uh, Bluetooth dongle, Wi-Fi dongle. Most different kinds of USB devices can plug into the Raspberry Pi, which is one of its strengths. Another component you'll find on the board is the Ethernet port. This is how you're going to get it online. Uh, you, if you uh, hook it up to your router at home, it'll get an IP address, and it'll get online that way. If you don't have a hardwire connection to the internet, you can also use a USB Wi-Fi dongle. They're only about $10. You plug them in, and you can get the Raspberry Pi on a Wi-Fi network for only $10. It's not bad. Uh, there's a little power jack on the board also. It's a micro USB jack. So it looks like a USB jack for a device like a cell phone or something. But the only way this is used is for power for the Raspberry Pi. So you want to keep that in mind. You'll need a, a, a power jack to connect to that. There's also an audio output on the Raspberry Pi if you want to do a project that involves uh, outputting audio. There's another port on here that probably isn't going to look very familiar to you. It's called a CSI, or Camera Serial Interface Port. It's how you can connect a camera to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, inside your cell phone, there are connectors from the main board to connect to the, ca the camera component inside the cell phone. You're usually not disconnecting and connecting that because it's all encased inside your cell phone. Um, on the Raspberry Pi, the connector is available to you. And the Raspberry Pi Foundation makes a fantastic camera that you can plug into that. And you can get like really high definition great quality video out of it. But I think the reason why we as makers really like the Raspberry Pi are a few, couple, a few features I'm going to talk about now. For one, there's the, uh, the GPIO pins. Who here has played with an Arduino before? Got a few people here. OK. So Arduino, it has pins on it. And these pins you can control. You can turn them on and off. Or you can read whether something is turned on and off. You can hook up a switch. You can hook up a sensor. The same is true with the Raspberry Pi. And you're going to use these pins on the Raspberry Pi to hook up different kinds of electronics to the device. Um, and typically, this is not something you'll see on a normal computer. It's one, it's one difference from a typical computer is you don't really have these pins sticking out of your computer. So these pins let you prototype. They let you integrate them into your projects. They're fantastic. But I think the absolute best feature of the Raspberry Pi, and another reason why we're really excited about it, is its price. And I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to sell you guys. I'm not trying to make this an infomercial or anything. But I think the price is significant, because it lets you integrate this into your projects pretty easily. It's not that expensive compared to other components you could use in a project. And especially if you want to integrate a computer into your project, this is probably your lowest cost option that you have. 
And if $35 is too expensive, there's also the Model A, which only has one USB port. It doesn't have the Ethernet jack. And it has uh, half the amount of RAM as the Model B, the memory that you'll use, that your programs will use. Um, the, the Model A also has the advantage that it uses a less, pow less power. So if you don't need that Ethernet, you don't need that extra memory, and you're building a project, it may be a better idea to look at the Model A and integrate that into your project. I want to bring up a quote from Linus Torvalds that he was talking to BBC News, and he said, I find things like Raspberry Pi to be an important thing, trying to make it possible for a wider group of people to tinker with computers and just playing around. I think, and making the computers cheap enough that you really can not only afford the hardware at a big scale, but also, perhaps more important, afford failure. I think that's the critical thing here, is being able to afford failure. If you had to use a $300 computer, which is probably on the lowest end of a computer if you wanted to hack and tinker and build something with it, you might be afraid to do some things with it because you don't want to lose $300. And what's fantastic about the Raspberry Pi is it allows you to afford failure. You, if, if, first of all, it's, it's hard to, to break it. But if you do, it was only $35. Linus Torvalds is the founder of Linux. He's, he's the guy who started it all. And that's the operating system that's running on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, just like you may use Windows or uh, Mac OS on your computer, this runs Linux. And it even has a desktop environment with a desktop and icons and everything. You use your keyboard and mouse to click around. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. Um, there are other operating systems you can load on the device, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the people who make Raspberry Pi, they offer an official distribution, uh, official operating system called Raspbian that has a lot of people working on it, a lot of people are using it. So if you ever have any trouble with anything, there's definitely someone out there who probably has the answer to the question you're looking for. So I do recommend checking out Raspbian, and it's pretty much the default that you'll find on everything. Uh, I want to talk about a few of the things you're going to need if you want to get started with Raspberry Pi. For one, you'll need a power supply. 5 volts, uh, you're going to want at least 700 milliamps or 0.7 amps. This one has 1 amp. It says here it says 1A on it. Uh, you just want to make sure that it has enough power, enough, letting enough current through it. Some cell phone chargers don't quite give it enough power. So you're just going to want to check it and make sure it's going to give your Raspberry Pi enough power. If you don't give it enough power, it can act a little strange sometimes. And uh, many times when people ask me about why the Raspberry Pi isn't working, I, I ask them about their power supply first. To connect the power supply of the Raspberry Pi, you're just going to use a regular USB uh, uh, cable, micro USB on one side, so it can connect to the Raspberry Pi. That's pretty basic. You'll find that anywhere. Um, instead of a hard drive, the Raspberry Pi ha uses an SD card. This is exactly the kind of SD card that you're going to put in a digital camera. And the kind of SD card you can also find in a drugstore if you need to grab one. Um, I recommend at least four gigabytes, and a class four card works really, really well. Uh, keyboard and mouse is useful to have. They want, you want to get USB versions of those. You don't need them necessarily. And a monitor is nice as well. There are some optional things as well. Uh, a case is helpful if you want to put your Raspberry Pi into a case. This is a, a case from Adafruit. Looks like this. It's about $10. You find those in the maker shed. Um, Pi Maroni over there, they sell beautiful rainbow cases as well. Um, now, you don't need to buy a case for your Raspberry Pi, but if you do want to protect it, you can also build your own case out of Lego. And we see lots of amazing cases out there. I think there's some uh, fantastic creativity in people who build cases for Raspberry Pi. I think we could round them up on, on the magazine one day. So how do you work with it, and how do you use it? Well, one way to use it is to program it using Scratch, which is a graphical programming language where you can really drag and drop different elements around the screen to get a character on a stage or a graphical element to do things any way you want. You can build a game. You can build an animation with it. Um, but if you don't want to necessarily use a sort of drag and drop environment and you want to try coding, you can also use Python, C, programming languages. You could use Java if you wanted to as well. Um, and if you're just getting started with coding, and you haven't written a line of code in your life and, you're, and you want to try it for the first time, I recommend trying out Python because there's plenty of support for using Python along with Raspberry Pi. So I want to show you a few things that you can do with Raspberry Pi. I want to start with one of the things that I did um, because I was so eager to integrate the Raspberry Pi onto my bike. I bike around New York City. 
and I wanted to be able to make a headlight for my bike that showed me information about my ride. So what I did was I took the Raspberry Pi, I slapped it onto a piece of wood and put that on my bike. I put a battery pack and some circuitry and connected it to a sensor on the wheels. And I put a projector onto the front of my bike, which I connected to the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi was controlling the projector. And what I had was a dynamic bike headlight, which I tried out on the streets for the first time. And this is a video of me trying it for the first time. What it's showing is it's showing the speed of the bike in the beam of the headlight. Now, it doesn't have to show the speed. You could reprogram it to you know, get GPS directions if you wanted to. Um, by the way, I'm not such a bad cyclist. I had the camera right where my torso should have been, and I was kind of like you know, teetering. I'm a much more conscientious cyclist, usually. So as I was saying, um, you don't have to use uh, the speed. It could be the calories burned, the distance you've gone, it could be your altitude, it could be text messages appearing in your bike headlight. This is just one possible application for Raspberry Pi. And what's great about it is that at only $35, I could just slap it right on the bike and, you know, that's it. Uh, while you're here at Maker Faire, there are plenty of Raspberry Pi projects if you just look around. Um, Behind you, there's an organ pedal a music synthesizer that's running Raspberry Pi. If you go inside NYSI, inside Zone A on your map, there, and you go downstairs, there is a 3D printer that's running Raspberry Pi. And also downstairs inside the New York Hall of Science, um, inside the New York Hall of Science, New York NYC Resistor, one of our hacker spaces, built this interactive game. They call it the Future Crew. And it's got like all these old, it's old equipment that they've put Raspberry Pis into. And you can plug and, and change things around. They've got a rotary telephone. You can dial things in. The whole thing is this interactive game. And it's all based on Raspberry Pi. So it's. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. While you're here, um, you can get Raspberry Pis over here or in the shed, uh, in the maker shed down that way. There's tons of cool Raspberry Pi accessories if you want to get started. There's also a nice uh, Raspberry Pi kit that you can get that has everything you need. It actually includes the book. Um, if you want to pick up the book, there's an address as well if you want to pick it up later. Otherwise, um, I, I'll, I'll let the next speaker set up, and I'll move over here if you guys have any uh, Raspberry Pi questions. Thank you so much for coming to my talk, and thank you for coming to Maker Faire. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.